Guys, what's up? How's it going? It's John Gamester81, and I am back with another system review. And I want to share with you guys what I think is probably the best retro system they can get on the market right now. And it is a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and I'm not, not talking about this Raspberry Pi, but I'm talking about a Raspberry Pi. It's a unit basically where you can load ROMs and emulators. Uh, this particular unit is a kit that I picked up from Gamers Tech, and I want to thank Gamers Tech for hooking me up with this to check out. I've had this for a while. I recently updated it with some new interfaces, which I'm going to show you in this video. I want to show you exactly what this system can do, and it, it will blow your mind as far as what this, this little unit can do. Uh, there are two different versions available. There's one that's a 64 gig unit, uh, and there's one that comes with 128 gigs. There are mini SD cards. This one I got, I actually uh, upgraded to 200 gig mini SD card, so I can fit a ton of games on here, literally tens of thousands of games. It's, it's amazing. So uh, what I'm going to do in this video is going to be a little bit longer than I usually do for a video because there's so much to show you uh, what this little unit can do. And at the very end, I'm going to explain, of course, the pros and cons of having a Raspberry Pi unit. I'll put a link to Gamers Tech and their kits below. I just want you guys to know that uh, when you do pick this up, uh, this, the unit itself, the Raspberry Pi itself, does not come loaded with any games or anything like that. You basically get what you get with this. What you get with a kit is you get the unit, you get several controllers, you get like a Super Nintendo style controller, a PlayStation 2 style controller, and you get this really cool interface controller that's, that has a keypad and a touch screen, touch pad. Uh, and of course you get the, the SD card size of whatever one you decide to get. Of course all the connections, HDMI cable, all that good stuff. And there's instructions on where you can get the interfaces. Uh, basically the ROMs are available through a simple Google search, uh, so that's entirely up to you. So it doesn't come with any games, but I just want to show you, I pimped out mine, I want to show you what, what this little unit can do. Let me know what you guys think, and thanks for watching. Here it is, uh, there is no on and off switch for the Emu or the Raspberry Pi, you just plug it in and when you turn it off, you, you, you actually plug out the power. Uh, but these are all the various emulators on here, and you can go, you can either hit up and down or left and right on the shoulder buttons and kind of skip uh, a little faster. We're going to start here, and this video's going to take a little bit longer because I just want to show you guys all that this thing can do. Uh, I have a 200 gig memory card, mini SD card, in this uh, Raspberry Pi, so I have a lot of different games for it. Uh, various systems here is the Atari 5200. On the bottom right there, it shows you how many actual games I have in the library. So in this case, I have 72 different games for the 5200. All the different box art, as you can see, there's some gameplay, and... Every uh, layout for a system is a little bit different. Uh, a lot of these are similar, though, you'll see. And here's the 7800. This, this game, system didn't do as well because uh, it kind of came out too late. They actually should have come out a little earlier. I'm going to show you how quickly it actually loads the games. And here it is. This is Asteroids. Actually, a pretty good port for the 7800. One biggest complaint about the 7800 a lot of people have is the sound chip is the same as the Atari 2600, so you can imagine that the audio quality isn't very great. When you exit, you just hit start and select on the controller, and it pops you back up to here. Here's a ColecoVision, one of my favorite, for those who know me, this is one of my favorite retro systems of all time. One of my first systems I've ever played. Everything's alphabetical, same thing, you can either hit up or down, or hit the left and right shoulder buttons. If you hold down or hold up, it'll actually skip them quite faster. Here's a game I want to show you, this is Cabbage Patch Kids. This is the game that you wouldn't think would be very good, but actually it's one of the better games, in my opinion, for the system. At the time, Coleco was producing Cabbage Patch Kids, very popular toy line, uh, creates ca created chaos in the holidays season for them. Everyone wanted one, but they obviously produced the Coleco version as well, and it only made sense they had a game that featured Cabbage Patch Kids. So um, this is a game that's very, very challenging. This is more, this is the harder difficulty I chose, kind of to give you an idea. And it's kind of like Pitfall, in a way. Uh, very similar to Pitfall. And it's all about timing. Super, super challenging game. The graphics for the ColecoVision are, are similar to that of, like, the MSX computer or uh, Sega SG-1000 as well. So a lot of ports, uh, a lot of homebrews today are, are ports of those systems. Here's a Vectrix. just want to show you uh, what this looks like on an emulator. It's at the complete library of games for the Vectrix. System was way ahead of its time. It's called the Vectrix because of the vector graphics. This is Mindstorm. This is a game that was built into the unit. So you picked it up. This, they actually had a few cartridge versions of this game, Mindstorm 2, but it's very, very rare. Um, and uh, you can kind of see 
here. This is the, the emulator. Emulates it fairly well, still not as good. The original vector Vectrex, when you see it in person, is so bright and it's hard to emulate it. But for the most part, this emulates it for fairly well. Uh, but nothing like playing the real uh, Vectrex. It's just hard to emulate that. This is one of the systems that's hard to emulate. Hit B, go back, SG-1000, by Sega, Japanese only. A handful of games for it. SC-3000. This came out before the Mark III, which was the Sega Master System. Speaking of which, it's the Sega Master System. And uh, a lot of great games that are, you know, the system was really unappreciated in North America, but it did really well in Brazil. Uh, here is Sega Ma uh, Mark III. This is basically the Japanese counterpart of the Sega Master System. A lot of great ports, a lot of exclusive titles that came out in for the Mark III. Of course, the Genesis, which I'm sure many of us know it. Um, love the way this is set up again with the box art and the cartridge label. You got some gameplay. Everything's alphabetical. A lot of great games. Genesis, to me, was really known for their sports titles as far as, you know, as well as their smups. Uh, Sonic series, of course, was great. I love there's a sports talk. I remember playing sports talk when it first came out. And it was just fantastic. I'm going to show you Jurassic Park. This is a uh, Jurassic Park. They had every uh, platform had a different port of Jurassic Park. But this one for the Genesis was my probably my favorite. I have a shader on here. There's a lot of shaders or, or filters. The shader currently is one for, for Game Boy, so it kind of looks like a weird color. I'm going to go change it here. As soon, I'll show you the difference. So you can hit uh, Select and Y and get you this menu. And you can do a quick menu, and I'll show you uh, very easy. There's a net play option, so I believe you can set it up to to play online, which would be crazy. You can host, play retro games online. I'm not quite sure how that would work. I've never really experimented that much, but super cool. <laughs> Uh, there, there's a close, take screenshot, you can save your slot or save state, load it. Here are the shaders, there's a lot of preset shaders already set up. So we can go load one. These are the preset ones. There's one for, for Super Nintendo, for example, specifically for Super Nintendo. The one I have right now is for Game Boy. So it kind of looks a little off. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when you set up another normal, normal shader here. Barrel just this is kind of like you if you were watching on, on a TV monitor. It doesn't really have the lines. You can do that. You can do the filter lines. You can add that as of course as well. But you'll see what I mean. Can I see how it's edged out a little bit? I think that looks really cool. The Super Nintendo port of Jurassic Park was so much more different. It was more of a top-down. There was also parts of the Super Nintendo port that were first-person uh, in certain levels, certain stages. This particular one was so much harder, though, in my opinion. Mega Drive. Of course, a lot of great games. Over 240 games here that I have on, on this uh, Raspberry Pi, the Inmu. 32X. Great. This is a complete library, 32X. Spider-Man, I believe, is a pretty uncommon game. FIFA. Motocross NBA Jam is a good port. Pitfall, good port. Primal Rage is also a good port. Star Wars is always good. So you virtual racing. I'm also going to show you how the, the save slates work as well. So you hit uh, select and either left shoulder or right shoulder and you can either right shoulder saves it select and left shoulder will load it preview and there are actually four uh, slave slots you can actually decide, choose from which is great let's change the shader here it adds a little bit of distortion on the monitor so it looks like you're playing on a normal tube tv very subtle looks really cool though
He still had the scheme back in the arcades. Another shade I'll show you. This one's got a little more distortion here. That looks like you're actually playing on a tube TV. <laughs> Pretty wild. This part was, this also came out for the Genesis, but the graphics here for the 32X port was so much more. It was a lot better. Um, just more smooth. When this game came out in the arcade, I was just blown away. I loved virtual racing. So much fun. Sega CD. Really cool intro here. And it starts off from the last game you played. So the last game I was played here was Batman Returns, which is a great game um, exclusive to the Sega CD, uh, I believe. Um, might be wrong on that, but it's a great... The version for the Sega CD is different, though, for sure, compared to the Genesis port. It's a great soundtrack, and... I don't have every uh, Sega CD game on here, but I have the ones, the quintessential ones that you definitely want to own. So like Snatcher and, and ones like that, to that nature. It seemed like Batman, you know, like Jurassic Park, every port was different. It seemed like Batman was the same case. Batman Returns, every port was a little bit different. Looks fantastic. I've got a few PlayStation games. I just want to show you uh, what they look like when when they load. I only have a handful, but again, the quintessential ones: Final Fantasy VII, Metal Gear, Odd, Odd World, Was Evil Two, Ridge Racer. So some good, really good ones. Kind of fast forward here and kind of see how smooth it looks. Just it plays really well. I didn't ever notice any issues with any of the PlayStation games running through uh, this emu. Makes me want to go back and play Final Fantasy VII again. One of my favorite Final Fantasy games, I think. Final Fantasy II North America is probably my favorite, but VII is definitely up there. Neo Geo, over 1,300 games for the Neo Geo. This is the, the AVS. This is the home port. PC Engine. Over a couple hundred games for the PC Engine. A lot of these games were never ported to the TurboGrafx-16. Definitely did a lot better in Japan than did in, in North America. Speaking of TurboGrafx-16, very underrated. A lot of great games. Bonks, classic. Alien Crush is a great pinball style game. Air Zonk, pretty rare, uncommon game for the system. Super Air Zonk for the CD is even more uncommon, but this is a great shmup based kind of on the the Bonks universe. If you have a TurboGrafx 16, I highly recommend you pick up Air Zonk. This is a highly addictive game. It's a lot of fun with a great soundtrack, and the CD port is even better with a better soundtrack too. A must own for the system, absolutely. You can see I, I saved it now. I, I loaded it again. You can see it just jumps right back to where I was. So it's really cool. So it's a benefit of emulator. You can save the game at any point you want. Super Graphics, only a handful of the games released. This is the successor to the PC Engine. Um, there's a Ghouls and Ghosts port, which is one of the better home ports you'll find. 1941. A lot of us know those that port by Capcom. But I only have five games on here. PC Engine CD. CD ROM 2, a lot of great shmups. So I'm going to show you the different ones. All these are in, in Japanese, right? So it's nice that you can see the gameplay and the, the, the 
game uh, label so you can kind of get an idea what the game's about. Here's a CD. I believe this is a complete collection. Fighting Street, which is basically Street Fighter 1. <laughs> um, it wasn't ported to many consoles, but it was ported to the TurboGrafx CD. So it was Madden football. <laughs> There's Super Arizona like I was talking about before. Here's E's. Some people say Y's, but it's actually pronounced E's. Kind of show you just again the, the audio soundtrack. I'm just show you how it loads. Really quick load time. I have literally over 10,000 games on this Raspberry Pi, so I can pretty much access any game I want. It's all in 1080p. Uh, it's all HDMI, of course. It just makes things a lot easier to capture. Um, Pose a plane through AV and hooking up a, a retro console. such an amazing game. It's been a long time since I've played these, but I remember playing it when I was growing up and just falling in love with it. And It's a good game, for sure. Great soundtrack. That's why the CD is so, so beneficial. We get the better soundtrack audio, CD audio. Family Computer, Famicom. Over 300 games, 380 games for the Famicom. A lot of these games weren't ported over to the NES in North America, vice versa, so a lot of cool exclusives. Here's a disc system. Not every game in this library has some gameplay footage, unfortunately, but most of them do. Super Famicom. I'll show you Aliens vs. Predator. Great beat em up by Capcom based on the arcade. Back to Vision. I don't know if this game was ported to the Super Nintendo. I don't recall. Let me know if you guys know or not. I want to say it wasn't, but I might be totally wrong on that. I just don't remember seeing it growing up. Still a very fun game. Very timely, of course, with the new Aliens game just came out. Or movie, rather. Let me show you the different um, shaders just for the Super Nintendo. Can give you an idea what, what it looks like here. There's a handful here, as you can see with scan lines. Looks pretty good. Plays great. Water paint scan lines. Pretty smooth, kind of smooths it out a little bit. Here's the NES. Killer intro. It even has, let me show you this game here real quick. Let's get to it real quick. It even has Nintendo World Championships, which is really cool. Super Nintendo, one of my favorite consoles of all time. Plays great. 
through the Raspberry Pi. Wild Gunch is a pretty uncommon game for the system. Really sought after, really fun shooter. Very unique system for the for the Super Nintendo. Very unique game, rather. It's very unique. So I'm going to show you some other shaders that that's are, are available for Super Nintendo because I think you guys will like them. I don't have time to show you every single game and every single shader, of course. It'd take forever, but this video is going to be long enough. <laughs> Moves out even more. Oh, we got stabbed. Give you guys an idea. N64, got a complete library. See, one of my favorite games for the system. And there's various, like, five different emulators for the N64 available. So well, some emulators play some games better than the others and vice versa. So you, have to, you can actually pick which emulator you want to play. You're Diddy Kong Racing. This game is awesome. Let's load it up. Let's get forward here a little bit and... See, so there's no no lag down, nothing, no lag or anything. Plays great, and you can actually use uh, like a PlayStation Two style controller that comes with the Emu kit, which handles a lot better than just the Super Nintendo controller because you've got the analog stick. The Atari Lynx was a great handheld. Actually, I actually owned Atari Lynx before I owned a Game Boy, the original Game Boy. So I have very fond memories of, of this complete library, of course. Looks so cool. I have a few DS games. I just want to show you uh, how these play. Um, the Emu Kit does come with the controllers I showed you earlier. That has like a touch pad and you should use that f as like you were like a DS, which is pretty sweet, pretty convenient. I've got a handful of games, the, again the quintessential games to own. I'll show you uh, Mario Kart for example. If I can get to it. Very quick load. You can kind of see the cursor there in top left. I'm using my touchpad controller uh, to move that, which I think is really, really cool. So let's go fast forward here. Yep, wrong button, but you can see it plays, plays well. It plays pretty awesome. It's crazy that people have been able to figure out how to emulate the DS. I'm sure the 3DS is next as well. It'll be a little harder to emulate the 3D, of course. Go ahead and exit out of this. Let me show you one of my favorite emulators. This is Game & Watch. This is so cool how they do this. Let me show you. Game & Watch is a line, uh, a line of handheld games by Nintendo. And not just Game & Watch in here, but there's other companies too that are on, in this emulator. But here, I'm going to show you Donkey Kong. Hit the left shoulder button to start. You can see it's just like... Even when I push the D-pad, it, it kind of changes the look of it. It's so cool. A really cool emulator. I 
Start select to exit, and then let me show you Donkey Kong Jr. Widescreen. You should hit select to zoom in as well, if you prefer, but I prefer to, to play like this. I actually own one of these, and again, this is spot on emulation. Spot on. Here's a zoom in. I'll show you one more. Let me show you uh, Donkey Kong by Coleco. I actually own this as well. Flip it on. Just like playing the real thing. Very, very cool. PSP, I have a handful of games on this. Only three. Space Invaders Extreme, though. It's, it's a good one. I could load more if I wanted to. These take up quite a bit of space. I'd have to remove... Uh, a game or so, but I could load more on if I wanted to. The music in this game is for, it's phenomenal. They've taken a lot of what they did here. They took the modern, the retro gameplay and just modernized it. So addicting, a lot of fun. A lot of great weapons and upgrades. Here are the minis. Wonder Swan. Over 100 games for the Wonder Swan. Wonder Swan Color. Game Gear, which was basically a portable Sega Master System, more or less, some very similar graphically wise, graphic wise. Got a complete library of Game Gear games. We have Geo Pocket. We have 10 games for it. A lot more games for the Pocket Color, which sold much better. There was a Sonic port to it. The Virtual Boy, underrated console, absolutely loved my Virtual Boy. A lot of good games for it. I wish there was more. I got shows the gameplay in, within the goggles. It's so cool. Doesn't emulate the 3D, but it does emulate the game. The game most of you guys have probably seen if you play Virtual Boy. It's tennis. Mario Tennis. This game was a packing game for the Virtual Boy. And I think it was a good packing game. Good choice for sure. Because it really showed off the 3D capability of the the Virtual Boy. You could hook it up to two-player uh, through a cable. But I don't think the two-player cable ever came out. Uh, but theoretically, that was kind of the idea. Warrior Land is a must-own for the system. Space Invaders, which only came out in Japan, is also a great game, but that's super rare. Here's Game Boy, got a complete library of Game Boy games. Over 
over 800. There's a ton. This actually may not even be all of them. There might be more than this. Gonna skip ahead. Show you Kirby's Dreamland. I'm gonna add, show you one of the shaders for the Game Boy specifically, kind of give you an idea what it looks like. I think it looks really cool. Looks really good. Looks just like the screen. <laughs> and Kirby's Dream Land. Really fun game. Ten of Game Boy Color games. Never got into the color, to be honest with you, growing up, but looking back on it, there's so many good games for the system that now I'm able to, to play and check out, and a lot of fun ones, of course, a lot of po great Pokemon games, of course, and all that good stuff, but here's the Game Boy Advance. Over 1,100 different Game Boy Advances game. You could literally spend hours and not play them all. <laughs> Hundreds of hours never play them all, thousands of hours. F Zero. Here's F Zero, which, if you like F Zero for the Super Nintendo, definitely check out the two F Zero games for the Game Boy Advances. They're really fun games and unique to their own. The Amstrad, which I know was huge in in the UK and, and in Europe, uh, wasn't so much as big here in North America, but we've got some games. For 3,000 games on here, which is incredible. Spectrum, ZX Spectrum, same thing, huge in Europe, but not so much in North America. But there's a ton of games. Commodore 64, which was big here in North America. I had one growing up, grandfather had one. Huge fan of Commodore 64. It lasted forever. I mean, I think it was like a decade or more. It was really supported for a long time and huge success to computer for Commodore. But you can see uh, it's a ton of games. MSX came out in Japan. Um, similar graphics, as I mentioned before in the video, to the ColecoVision. Uh, but this, these are games like Metal Gear uh, actually debuted on the MSX before it came out for the Famicom or, or NES, of course. Here's MSX2. Tons of games, really cool intro. That's one thing about, I guess, emulation is you're able to play these games that you weren't necessarily able to play before just because they're imports. Here's the Raspberry Pi at the top. There's actually 128 games that, you know, people have downloaded the most and there's just all, all platforms. So you can see just some classic one, Clay Fighter, Comic Zone. Great game for the Genesis. Uh, Crash Bandicoot. These are just. This is kind of where I go when I want to play a good game. This is a section where it has like all different categories. So this one is Batman. Uh, so this has got every Batman game covering all platforms. I just wanted to kind of show you uh, the layout. Super cool. So if you're a Batman fan, uh, you may like this. this. Is again kind of a nice area to go to and uh, all platforms of Batman. It's crazy how many different Batman games came out and they're all. Kind of unique. I think this is the NES one, of course, and that's probably my favorite one. Uh, great soundtrack by Sunsoft. Here's Darius. I didn't even realize there was that many different Darius games and ports, and again, same thing. Darius is a really fun uh, shooter. Shmup. Double Dragon, all the different ports of Double Dragon. 
Such a really cool intro, too. <laughs> Love the soundtrack. So awesome. And Battletoads versus Double Dragon. Just all the different ports of Double Dragon for the different various systems. In the bottom there, it'll tell you what platform it is, what year it came out. Donkey Kong Collection. So these are a bunch of different Donkey Kong games. A lot of different arcade ports of Donkey Kong. This is where you would go. Donkey Kong is one of my favorite arcade games. You can kind of see the, the layout here. Super cool. But it also includes Donkey Kong Country and Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. The ColecoVision, a whole bunch of different ports. Donkey Kong 3, Donkey Kong 64. Fatal Fury Collection. Great fighting series, of course. All the different ports. Neo Geo, of course, I believe this was ported to the Super Nintendo Ghouls and Ghosts by Capcom. A lot of different ports based on the classic arcade. See graphically the difference too, it's interesting. King of Fighters series. Also by SNK. Super Mario Collection. So if you're a Mario fan, this is where you would want to go. This has got all the Mario games on it. Dr. Mario versus Super Mario Brothers, Yoshi's Island, Super Mario RPG is a great game, fantastic stuff. Here's a cool intro, this is uh, Mega Man, I uh, love this intro, super cool, kind of a hard rock cover of Mega Man. What's really cool is when you go to this, you can see that uh, every game has its own little like page image, which is sweet. Mega Man 2 is probably one of my favorite ones, but they're all good and challenging and fun. Metal Slug series. Another SNK uh, running gun shooter. Just a lot of fun. If you like games like Contra, this is a series definitely to check out. Most of them came out for the Neo Geo. Also came out for the Neo Geo Pocket. Here's Mortal Kombat series. A ton of different ports for Mortal Kombat. Various different platforms. Outrun by Sega, a really fun fun racing series by Sega. Look at that, it's super cool. Pac-Man Collection. It's unbelievable how many different Pac-Man games are. It's, it's really crazy. Including Pac-Lan and Miss Pac-Man and Junior Pac-Man, all the different ports. A lot of MAME, of course. Classic NES, Junior Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. Sonic Collection. So we showed Mario earlier, and this is now the Sonic Collection. Almost 50 different Sonic games available. Street Fighter Collection. Heroes Arcade is uh, basically where you go to find, play games that are based on superheroes. You get the Punisher, um, Marvel's Capcom, Marvel Superheroes, for example, X Men, X Men Arcade, X Men vs. Street Fighter, games to that nature. Sports, unbelievable how many different sports games there are. It's, it's crazy. Thousand, I think there's over a thousand in this uh, unit. Two, over 2,000. Crazy. All different platforms. Ton of different sports titles. Star Wars. I'm a huge Star Wars fan, and of course, this is the section where I would go for my games. Uh, it's right there. It shows the three Super Star Wars trilogy games, but there's just very various ones are available from the Atari 2600, uh, which is I believe Empire Strikes Back was the first one, to you know 
other ones. One of the hardest systems to emulate actually is the Atari Jaguar, and that's not, I don't have that on here. It's one of the harder systems to emulate. Saturn has been tricky for a while, and I think they've kind of cracked that recently. But I don't have Saturn on here either. Simpsons Collection, based of course on the TV series. Showing the Simpsons Arcade right there, which is only ported to the Commodore 64, as far as I'm aware, as far as home ports go. But there's a lot of Game Boy Simpsons games. There is, um, of course, NES ports, the Game Gear ports, the Base Mutants was ported to a bunch of different platforms, Genesis included, I believe. Virtual Bar. There's the Simpsons. Toki. There's the Turtles. This is the one my boys like to play, like the turtles. So, uh, a <laughs> ton of different games for the turtles, of course, including the arcade games, the home ports, almost 30 different turtle games. Well, the foot clams for Game Boy, one of the first Game Boy games I got, actually, turtles game. Zelda intro. Check out this intro. Really cool. I like Zelda. This is definitely one uh, to check out. That's so killer. <laughs> it's awesome. You can see the Triforce in the bottom left corner there, but uh, a lot of different Zelda games, of course. I think Link to the Past is probably one of my favorite ones. Link Awakening for the Game Boy is also great. Ocarina of Time, of course, is, is up there in the list. Running Gun games, a bunch of different games for Running Gun if you like this type of genre. Shmups, same thing, categorizes it by not only every system, but you can do it by, by other systems as well. So there's a ton of here you can see. Genesis Shmups, Game Boy Advance Shmups. Super Nintendo Shmups, PlayStation Shmups. I mean, the list, the list goes on and on. You can spend hours and days going through. Some hack games. Don't, there's not too many Spider-Man ports. Different Spider-Man games. Disney. A lot of Disney games came out. I didn't realize how many until I actually went to this area. And uh, it's pretty incredible when you start looking at it. Over 130 different Disney games. Even Aladdin ports alone, there's a lot, and they're all different. The Super Nintendo port of Aladdin was a lot different than the Genesis port. There's the Game Boy. There's the Genesis one, probably one of my favorite Genesis games out there. Mario vs. Sonic, Final Fantasy. All the different games. 19 total. Wonder Boy. Motocross. There's favorites. You can actually save your favorites. Cody is like where you can load movies and stuff. So you can actually load your own movies. Here's the arcade. This is part of where we get into the main section. And over 2,200 uh, different arcade games. All really port very, very well. Pal Burn Alpha, this is another just uh, kind of arcade emulator. With another 1300, over 1300 different games are different than listed before. One thing cool about this unit too is you can plug in, it's programmed to other play other controllers as well. So if you have like a Xbox uh, USB controller, you can use that, uh, which is nice. Uh, it does come as I mentioned before, PlayStation 2 style controller. So there's a different bunch of different options and you know, the controllers, you can map the controllers of course to your liking for each game or each console. Uh, but the mapping for this is, is, is pretty standard. CP systems like the Capcom, almost like their 
Neo Geo, so to speak. Uh, there's a lot of fighters and, and shooters reported. They're big kind of carts that you would use. CP2 system and there's a CP3 system. Here's the Atari Classics and Capcom Classics and you're starting to get into some of the other ones that are all main. We guys can kind of see the idea. There's just so much you can spend days playing this and uh, what I'm going to do now is share with you my final thoughts on uh, the Emu Raspberry Pi. So guys, um, I know this video again is a little bit longer than I usually do, uh, but there's so much to share on what this, this little thing can do. Uh, I want to start off with the cons of why uh, this may not be the unit for you. Um, I am Personally, I prefer to play the real thing. I love having tangible copies of games. I'm a collector, I'm a gamer, so I like to go out for that. It is certainly, having all these games doesn't, doesn't affect me personally to go out and, and buy the games, but some people, if they have all these games for free at the tip of their fingers, they may not want to go out and support uh, the, you know, the, the gaming community in, in buying games. So that certainly is a negative. To be honest, that's really the only negative I can think about owning a Raspberry Pi opposed to a normal console. Uh, for me, it doesn't really affect me like I mentioned before, but for others, I could see how that would affect you. know, There's really that controversy as far as emulation and all that good stuff, right? There's kind of a gray area. Uh, but I really feel like emulation has really gone uh, pretty good lately as far as what it can do. Before, some systems like the N64 uh, didn't really emulate very well, and they've definitely improved that. Uh, it's just a matter of convenience. So if you're a person who's looking to stream games, who want all these games at the tip of your fingers, this is definitely a unit to check out. Um, it's also, uh, I love that you can, can save states, which is convenient at any point. You can add, you can do shaders, as I mentioned before. Uh, you can do fil which are basically like filters. Um, and uh, a lot of things that you can do that you normally can't do on a normal system. Um, it, there's a lot to be said having a tangible copy of the game, though. I will say that for sure. Um, overall, it, it's a really convenient unit. Um, it, it's right there. Uh, it, it saves me from, from going through my collection of games and actually trying to uh, garbage through them and, and find the game so I can actually rather you know I'll own the game still and I'll display the games which is great but for me when I play games it's probably the way to go it's all 1080p um, it, it's really cool so again I'll put a link to the gamers tech uh, website below thank you so much for watching let me know what you guys think we'll see you guys soon take care and of course game on